Hey, thanks for making it back. We are going to go a little bit further into our motor control circuit, which controls the, the uh, motors that run our pumps. Uh, and these contactors can also control the voltage that goes to our heating elements uh, in our boil kettle, mash tun, uh, hot liquor tank, or our boiler that provides uh, the steam for the jacketed systems too. Regardless though, we're controlling three-phase motor with a smaller lower voltage uh, in our control circuit. Okay, and we've, we've, we've talked about the differences uh, in those and what separates those being the control transformer, how we step power down from a higher voltage down to a lower voltage that's safer for us to work with. So we got a little bit more to cover and then that will wrap things up as far as motor control with the exception of variable frequency drives, which we're going to get into in the next lesson. Um, I think you'll really enjoy that. That is one of the coolest technologies to come out in a long time, in my opinion. But you can do so much with those, but we're going to devote some uh, time there to that one. It's not a real long lesson, but it will pull together control circuits, variable frequencies, um, and the, uh, the, the power circuit, and everything that we've, we've learned uh, thus far will come into play, particularly with VFDs. So we're going to uh, work our way toward this, but first we've got to get through this one little section here that doesn't take very long at all, but it's, this is how things work uh, for that give us the control that we've been talking about so far. So let's go ahead and delve into that, all right? So first of all, we're going to continue to use this, uh, this uh, uh, schematic here. We have a three-phase motor and a high voltage versus the, and down there at the low voltage in the control circuit, okay? And we know that we press that start button and it energized the coil, <coughs> excuse me, the coil to the motor starter, and that motor starter physically pulled uh, with its magnetic uh, field, physically pulled an armature down that was connected to three sets of contacts, A, B, and C phase, that allowed the voltage to go to our motor. We've already done that, just kind of rehash on where we can pick up. So now, what we're going to do is we are going to add a set of contacts down here, similar to these, except for we're not going to be passing high voltage through these, we're going to pass a low voltage, and we're going to get into how that works. This is what we know as the auxiliary contacts. Now these are mounted on the side of a motor starter or a contactor and they're going to be very hard to see uh, but I'm going to show you. I've got the cover plate pulled off and the three sets of contacts here on the left hand side are for the three phases of voltage going into our starter then coming out through our overload block and onto our motor to make it run. That leaves us this one set right here and this is the auxiliary set. Now three phases here we're not going to run motor voltage through here. This is going to be the control voltage, uh, step down to 120 volts in this particular case, and we're going to run it through here, and it's, it is controlled by the same armature that pulls these three contacts together, okay? That armature pulls in, okay? It also closes this set of contacts, and this set of contacts here is denoted with this normally open set of contacts here. Now again, these are all mounted to the same starter, we're going, to run, we're going to run three phase voltage, higher voltage through three of them that control our motor. And then we're going to have one set that's going to do our control force. And we're going to show you how that control is, what that control is. But you're going to have 120 volts sitting in here for our control voltage. And we, we energize our coil that creates that magnetic field. Armature pulls in and closes these contacts as well. Now, let's, uh, we're going to delve into all of this. But uh, first of all, let's set things up first, okay? So we got three phase voltage coming in on our power circuit and it's powering the primary side of our transformer that is stepping down and giving us a single phase 120 volts. And as we got it set up through here, our power is coming out. And again, conductors are just road maps. That's kind of where this is gonna come into play. They're just uh, little, little road maps. These are where the power is going to travel physically, okay? So we're coming at our transformer. We're going through a stop button that's normally closed. We talked about that. With our hands off of the button, it's going to be closed, and it will allow current to flow through our input device, or this normally closed stop button, okay? And remember, input devices do not convert our electron flow into any type of work. It just passes it through. It's sort of a gateway. It's like, come on in. I'll let you go out, provided my contacts are closed. If they're open, I'm going to keep you at bay, all right? So in the case of a stop button, a normally closed stop button, without touching it's going to let it pass through and we're going to come up to our start button. Then we're going to take this wire here that's coming off the, the uh, downstream side of our stop button, okay? I will show you this real quick, okay? And this power going into our start button 
Okay, we're going to have that power and we're going to put it right here on top of this contact right here. This is a set of auxiliary contacts. So that's where the 120 volts is coming from. It's coming from our transformer, coming through our stop button, and then after it's going through our stop button, we're going to connect it to the start button, but we're also going to have it tied together, which is our little dot right here. We're going to tie it together, and we're going to provide voltage at the top of that set of contacts. So we're going to take 120 volts and literally screw it to this terminal right here, and now we've got voltage at this set of contacts just sitting there waiting on us, okay? We're not energized. We're just sitting there with it and it's sitting there doing nothing for it but just waiting. So we have a difference of potential right here, okay? So, that said, this is what we got so far. Now, we call this, this setup right here, using that auxiliary contact, a seal-in circuit, okay? And you're gonna see why. We're gonna seal in around the start button, but you're gonna see how it happens, okay? First of all, let's go back and look at what we had before we had the seal-in circuit. Our previous circuit, was just a stop button, a start button, and we held this button down and we energized our coil. The coil uh, pulls the armature, the armature is connected to the contacts, contacts give us three phase voltage going to the motor, and of course this is the uh, neutral side of our contact, our control circuit, and so that's how that works. However, if you remember the, the uh, end of the last lecture, you said it's awfully inconvenient to stand here and hold your button. Okay, even a manual motor starter can do it better for us than that. So rather than having to start uh, to hold that start button in and keep that motor running, we're going to use our seal-in circuit. And here's how this works. We're going to press the button the same way we did the last time. It's going to provide voltage to our coil, which will create the magnetic field, pull the armature, pull the contacts, start the motor. Okay? And this is going to be our neutral. So we're going to have, we're going to leave the house, we're going to travel, and we're going to come back home. We always want to come back home with our circuits. So we're going to press the start button, and that's going to happen. Okay, now something else that's going to happen is these contacts are going to close and provide a path across these contacts. Okay, so the power is going to be right here. It's going to, it's going to, we're going to press it. We're going to energize this coil. Not only are these closing to provide this path, now this one, this auxiliary set is closing at the same time. You saw them physically right beside the three phase ones. This is going to close too. Now we've got two uh, paths of power to energize our coil. We're not putting twice the voltage on there, no, but it's the same voltage. Okay, it's 120 volts, and it's just an, another uh, parallel source of power going to our, or path of power going to our motor starter, okay? So when we press that button, these contacts close, and now we've got two paths going on here. Now here's the nice thing about it. When I let my stop button go, okay, I still have this path right here established. So that magnetic field is in the, the energized the coil on the, on the motor starter or contactor is still energized and will stay energized, okay? We can go back and press the button if you want to, still it's going to energize and not going to change a thing. But when we let up off that stop button, I mean that start button, now we've got another established path that's energizing our um, a contactor relay. Okay, so our motor continues to run with our button, with our hand off the push button. Okay, so we have sealed in around the start button. That's what we call it a seal in, and we're using the auxiliary contacts. They're kind of riding side saddle these three contacts for the bigger voltage. Okay, these are riding along side saddle with it, and they're controlled by that same armature that's pulling these closed. It's closing that one too. So now we have another. Uh, uh, source of uh, power established for the coil, it will continue to run until something stops and opens this circuit. It can be anywhere, okay? Now the most practical place to, to, to break the circuit would be the stop button, okay? We can do that, okay? We press the stop button and it kills the power. Remember, this is the only path established at that point. So it kills the power to here, all right? This becomes de-energized. Okay, it's no longer energized. These contacts, as we learned the last time, open up, kill the power to the motor. Well, we said these were connected uh, along the side saddle with these right here. Same thing happens. This de-energizes, it opens them up. Okay, we let go of our stop button and we reestablish power, but it's going to stop right there until we hit the start button again. Okay, so when we hit our stop button, it kills it all the way back here. We let go of our stop button, it closes the contacts and then it brings power back to our start button so we can have a uh, power ready for us when we want to start the motor 
It also brings power back to those auxiliary contacts so that when they close, they will also provide that path of that alternate path of power to our starter. Okay, so I want to step through these one more time, uh, just to just to you know show you the process. So here we are. We're sitting here, fat, dumb, and happy, and we want to start our motor. Press that start button. Boom. We've got an energized coil. Contacts closed. That set closed as well. Now I'm going to let go of my start button. I got my other alternate path, keeping that energized. We're all going along now. If these overloads were to open up right here, protect, let's say we put our motor in a real bind and the current level starts rising on us in the three-phase circuit and we, and we uh, trip our overloads, there's a set of contacts right here that are attached just like these are attached. Okay, they're riding alongside side of here except for these are in the control circuit, these are in the power circuit. If they break this motor circuit, it breaks it right here and then our neutral dies. You'll have to excuse me, but I don't have this uh, killed for you. But let me just imagine if the rest of this green goes away. We've killed our circuit. We're not, we're not getting our complete circuit back home. This kills that. And then we wind up opening this contact right there. And we wind up kind of like that. All right. So that's one thing that could happen. Uh, we could have a motor coil burnout. Okay. Let's suppose our coil, our wraps of wire, around, 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 around a, a gazillion times. Let's say it burns out in the middle and it won't let current pass through it anymore. Okay? Well, that also is going to stop the current flow and it's going to go back to shutting this coil, or the coil will be shut off because it burned itself up. But again, uh, we could break a wire here, we could break a wire there, but most, but really for teaching purposes and learning this, the most practical uh, way of, of, of uh, stopping this circuit from staying energized is to hit the stop button like that and it'll kill it back there. And once we let go of the stop button, we reestablish power up to this point. So there you have it. That's how a ceiling circuit works. So um, I think I also asked you on the last video, said you probably got something around your house that has a ceiling circuit. Well, the one thing that comes to mind is a garage door opener. When, for those of you that have garage doors that have the electric lifts on them, what we have is you walk up to, a, to the button on the side, and you're somewhere in the wall, on the wall in your garage, uh, and you press that button and you walk away. You don't have to stand there and hold that button, okay? You press that button and you walk away. Well, the control circuit that would run, that would make this door work is something very similar to this, okay? Um, we have our power rail right here and our neutral or ground rail right here. And it doesn't matter if it's 120 or 24 volts or 12 volts, the still the circuitry is going to work the same, okay? Now, the devices have to be comparable um, to that uh, to accommodate those voltages, but Regardless, we've got power coming in, and we're going up to our, let's just say this is our wall button. This is the wall button that makes our, our uh, garage door come up. We're just going to deal with coming up right now, because reverse is the exact same thing, just in the opposite direction. But let's suppose we press our button, okay, all right? When we press our button, we'll get voltage to the coil of our motor starter. Actually, it says stator, but it's motor starter. Excuse me, excuse the misspelling here. Uh, and or it could be a relay which does the same thing we're going to get in that second too but we press our button we have voltage coming and we energize that coil okay these contacts right here will close so that we can walk away and not have to hold that button now it will continue to run uh, until we hit our upper limit switch okay and once our upper limit switch is uh, the door is all the way retracted this switch will open and will kill the circuit and make the make the door, it will open the circuit and make the door stop running, okay? If we didn't have this limit switch, it would continue to run and run until it grounds itself to death in that, in that opener uh, and tear up a lot of things in, in the process. But my point is, is that we energize that coil, closes the auxiliary contacts, and all this is located in the head that pulls your door up, but it's still the same principle. So if you, now that you know this, you can kind of understand how your garage door works, all right? So, all of this is to teach you a ceiling circuit. We're not learning about garage doors, but it's all about ceiling circuits, which we use when we turn, uh, when, I, when we do turn our pumps on or we turn our heating elements on, okay? They stay energized so that we don't have to sit there and hold a button. So we, uh, again, we energize this and these contacts are connected. They're the auxiliary set. They're connected right there to this relay or starter. And we walk away and the door comes up until we hit that limit switch, it opens the circuit. And when we open the circuit, this dies, and so does our motor, okay? So that's generally how it works. 
Um, but I thought I would just give you an example as to you know what, what might be around the house. I always try to like to do that, make it relative to something. For those who have not worked in breweries yet, uh, or who have just started, you can start to kind of make things uh, you know relative, and understand them. Okay. Now, there's another thing I want to talk about very quickly. We've talked about 120 volts uh, a lot using our uh, control circuits to make our control circuits work, and we do do our we do come off our step uh, now transformer as I've shown you. However, what we talked about earlier, DC voltage is also used. Okay, and you can't. Batteries are just not a good source to, to provide control voltage for, for DC control voltage, okay? Um, so anyway, what we use, uh, we talked about this one of the first lessons, was the power supply, okay? And it is a control transformer in that it steps our 120 volts down to, say, 24 volts, sometimes 12 volts, all right? But our power supply will take 120 and step it down. Well, what's the difference between that and a step-down transformer? The difference is that there is a set of diodes, and we are not going to go down to that level, okay? Uh, diodes sort of create a, a, a block on the negative part of our sine wave, on AC sine wave, so that all we see is the positive side of our sine wave. And it's kind of happened so fast it's uh, relatively smooth, so we sort of consider that a smooth, solid DC control uh, voltage. But what we have is we have our... Um, power going into our power supply, it steps it down, and then it, here's the term, rectifies, which means converts it to AC, from AC to DC, so that we get a DC plus and a DC negative coming out of our power supply, and then we supply, then we uh, control, all of our control devices are rated for 24 volts, and we're able to control, uh, we can even still control three-phase motors uh, with a coil that's rated for 24 volts and also a set of con uh, auxiliary contacts that are rated for 24 volts. This is just a simple uh, schematic that I've got, but my point for this one is that we are providing 120 volts of power into our um, power supply and we're getting out, if that's AC, and we're getting out 24 volts of DC. And we do it by stepping it down and rectifying the AC to the DC through a rectifier bank. Don't want to get into that because you will never take one of these apart. All you've got to know is how to put your meter on here to say, hey, I'm getting 120 volts in, and I'm getting 120 volt, and I'm getting 24 volts out of DC. If you're not getting something in, you've got to go back and figure out, is it in the transformer? Is it in the fuse? Is it in the primary of my transformer? Am I getting power to my transformer? Don't know. All I know is I don't have power there. If you are getting power to this, and you've got uh, 24 volts, or whatever it is that it's rated for, and you're not getting it out, Okay, unless there's a fuse in here somewhere, uh, just take it and throw it away. Get a new one. Okay, they're not worth repairing. Uh, they're not all that expensive. Probably hundred bucks, but you're not going to have someone repair it for you. They're not going to go in there and change the diodes or any other parts of that. Once it's gone, it's gone. They're they're uh, just replaceable. So, but the idea is that if you got 20, 120 uh, going in and you don't have 24 or 12, whatever the, the, the voltage is supposed to be coming out, chuck it and put in a new one. Okay? But it provides you with 24 positive and 24 negative, which will complete our circuit. And this is another uh, graphic. This is using a control relay. A CR is the designation for control relay. Okay? And it works just like a motor starter does in that uh, we provide um, voltage to this coil. It uh, will energize the coil, create that magnetic field, pull that armature. The armature is connected to these control, these normally open contacts on the control relay, these will close. Now, here is a control relay. It looks a little different, and, and they come in all shapes, sizes. I mean, there's so many I could possibly uh, show you all of them, or even a fraction of them, but they work the same way. Here's your coil voltage. Here we'll have 24 volts, positive, negative. Completes our circuit, energizes that coil, creates that magnetic field, pulls that armature down in like that, and we have four sets of contacts right here. All of these are normally open, so it means that we can control up to four different devices with one energizing of the relay, okay, of the control relay. Now, I've got two sets right here. I'm using one set for a seal in, remember that? Same circuit, it's a seal in, okay? And I'm using another set of contacts that when it, the, the uh, coil energizes, it closes these also. So it closes this set of contacts, 
and it closes this set of contacts. Both these normally open. So when we energize that, we're going to seal in. That means we can walk away after we've pressed the start button. We can walk away because that alternate energy uh, path is going to be maintaining the voltage at the coil and keep it energized, keep it pulled, and it'll keep those pulled. It'll also pull these closed, and we get a little pilot light number one. It can be red, green, blue, whatever, yellow. Uh, it's, but what happens is when we hit the start button, not only does it seal in and we can walk away, but we should get a light turn on. This is just a simple circuit, uh, control circuit, and you'll see these uh, um, if you try to read a print from, uh, let's say, a brew house system or something like that. I know it's spike. We, we've kind of gone over the spike system a little bit in the lab, and we'll continue to use those when we have additional labs as well. But this is just some simple symbology, some simple devices, uh, and the most common type that are used, and it just gives you an idea of, of how, they, how they're wired. Okay, now that's, this is not the physical location of any of these devices. The stop button can be here and the start button right next to it, but this control relay could be like, you know, 25, 30 feet away in, another, in, a, in a cabinet somewhere. So, but my point is, is that this is the path that the power will take, okay? Regardless of how far or they're separated or anything like physically, this is the path that the power is going to take because these are actual wires that connect the two devices, okay? But that's kind of what I wanted to show you. That sort of wraps up things for us as far as control. Um, again, we have, man, I've looked back at what we've covered so far uh, in this short period of time. So far, we've still got a lot more to talk about. But um, we've talked about how, motor, uh, how power is developed, three phase, single phase, okay? We've talked about the sine waves and all of that stuff that we're talking about. We've talked about transformers. We've talked about motor coils and how those rotating magnetic fields chase those, uh, the, the rotor chases the uh, fields in the stator and things like that. Um, we talked about control transformers. Now we've talked about control uh, circuits. We've talked about power uh, supplies. We've got covered a lot and everyone has held on really good. So I I'm, I'm just want to commend you on that. But uh, we're going to do one last thing uh, in the next lesson. This will conclude this one, but uh, we're going to get into VFDs, which I think is real fun. It's going to be a short lesson, and then we're going to start moving into pneumatics, okay, uh, and, and hydraulics also, how we control air and fluid power and things like that. Uh, we've been controlling electricity so far. We're going to use electricity to also to control the valves and things that we've got to use. And again, it all goes, even the valves with the pneumatics and hydraulics, it all goes back to coils of wire that create magnetic fields. I told you 90, 95% of what we're going to learn uh, or that you that you know about electricity is going to be magnetic fields created by coils and wire. Okay, So it continues on even in pneumatics and hydraulics. But that's all i got for you right now. Uh, we're going to wrap this lesson up. And thanks for watching. I hope you're understanding everything. If you're not, reach out. And I will be more than happy to continue to go through this with you. Uh, you know, just give me calls. Um, and we'll, sit down the phone. we'll set up a Zoom meeting or, or a Teams meeting. And we'll talk some more about this stuff. But just want to make sure you understand it. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying teaching you. So uh, anyway, just uh, come back uh, for, for the next lesson after we're done with all our reading and all our quizzes and things like that. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much.